Well, hi guys, welcome back to the spare room. I needed a piece of three quarter by quarter brass stock, and I can only get inch. So I thought, well, I'll mill a piece down. I've just got a end mill, and I couldn't find a quarter inch one. I think there's one here somewhere, but this one's five millimeters, and that'll do the job. And I've got the piece of stock held in the, in the tool post. Now, that's a pretty straightforward bit of milling. It seems to me that milling in the lathe is kind of discounted by most machine channels on, on YouTube as really everyone has a milling machine and some people have milling machines that are pretty worn out and they still go to them over the lathe which is a little bit strange. It seems to me that you use your most accurate and your best quality machine tool for everything. And that's why I have this lathe. And that's handled with fibre mill cut and brass particularly easy. And you'll handle fibre mill cut and steel with a sharp end mill just as easy. There's not a lot of adjustment with the tool post, but with a vertical slide there's there's really no limit of the small parts that you can make if you really needed to. You've got to look at it on the end, but hey, that's really not a big deal. Um, very easy to find excuses, I think. Here's me on my hobby horse again. But uh, it's very easy to find excuses for why you can't make something or why something can't be made with available equipment this is probably just as easy to file up if you marked it up and, and set it on a like a filing template in the, in the vise and, and hit it with a file it would only take about as long to, to clean it up and that would be a pretty easy way to do it too so that's what we've got this is a piece of brass milled up have a look at our engine That's bolted in there, and that's the, the main plate for the for the cylinder. And that looks pretty good. So next job is to cut this off, mark it and cut it nicely with a hacksaw and file it up to inch and a quarter long. And we're well on the way to finishing this part. So that fits up there like that without a lot of effort. It's just a little bit proud there and it wants to be. The next job is to mark this out. So there's three holes it's on the same centre. The middle one is eighth, which is running diameter for the for the cylinder pivot pin. And the outside ones are threaded one eighth, so a num they're a number 38 drill so they're right on center so the the job will be to to machine that to mark those holes and center punch them and drill them nicely so having marked and drilled them the tapping size it says that to hold all this accurately which it's sort of fun. It says use a toolmaker's cramp, which I don't have. And I'm not going to sit down and make one. So I've got this little G-clamp, might do the job. That's all held in together. And it says to put this in a vise that way round and to drill it 
in the drill press. Now, that's all very well too, but the sad truth is that I haven't got a machine vice either, which is a bit crap. So, probably, I'm going to set this over the edge here and carefully drill them right through and clean them out afterwards with the reamer. That's probably the best way to do it by hand, I think. And we've got the three holes drilled in there. Somewhere near even square and straight. So then we can take that off. Have a look at our three holes there in from the back. And we can drill these out to one eighth, the two outside ones. And the center drills, the center holes drilled one quarter. the two outside ones and the middle one has got to be quarter or 6.5 millimeters and there's a 6.5 millimeter drill <laughs> nice clearance for the spring there so next job is to tap them and I think I'll at least start the tap in the drill press might be the best way to do this. I'll take this drill out and disconnect the belt and find a taper tap to go right through. So we'll just slip this belt off and set the return stop. Move this nicely over the centre. Scrub up on the back. We might just do the same to this casting. Little warding file. And we'll see if it bolts on. So I've got a couple of half inch by eighth width worth round head screws, stainless steel screws there. And that bit's on. Looks pretty good. It's a bit of a clean up. Just to see how it looks, we might put the the crankshaft in it. Next job on this, it needs a recess in here. If we have a look at this drawing, it's got a, just a little bit of relief in here where the pivot goes, which isn't a bad idea. It gives you nice bearing surfaces for the plate top and bottom. It says the recess is 6mm from each end, which is um, 32 less 12 is 20 millimeters across the center. This gives us a square that big. And it's only 0.5 of a millimetre under. So, the book says to file it in. And I don't think it would be a particular hardship if we mark this up. We get a nice job and I might go ahead and do that now. Probably the easiest way to do that is just to mark a diagonal line across the middle of the counter bore. And then mark each edge across. And that gives you a square in the centre. So I've done that. And we're going to sit him down and a bit of an exercise in nice filing and see if we can clean that up and make it look a bit like it was machined. So that's a recess filed in there. It's not perfect but it'll do the job. I might have a bit more of a fiddle around with it yet. And the last final job is to put a counter bore in the back there and give it all a bit of a clean up. And there we've got the, the cylinder plate 
and that's where that fits up there it's got a recess in there nicely for the spring and it's got a rod comes through here that screws in the back of there with a nut on it there's another little job that we need to do on this and I haven't done yet and that's to Loctite this bearing in or to put a little bit of Loctite on it and to drill the oil hole in here so so we're pretty much done with this casting next thing really is to give it a coat of paint so clean up with some thinners and some undercoat that'll be next we've got our two round head screws go on there this will eventually need a bit of Loctite in here I think and tighten him up and if we have a look in our spring assortment we've got just the thing I reckon that fits in there our nut goes on there we put our crankshaft in there and it's starting to look a lot like a religion so that's that part done and we're ready to basically make a piston and con rod and a few little finishing touches and we're pretty much ready to go together so thanks for watching guys, more soon.